The Lord be with you. Thank you for joining us today here at Christ Our Savior Lutheran Church in Holland, Michigan for the full counsel of God, word, and prayer. We continue in the book of Acts. Today we have chapters 14 and 15 on the 27th day of the month. So let's hear God's word together and pray. We begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Speak, Lord, for your servants hear. Please show us now your ways, that we may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of our own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Give me life, O Lord, according to your word, and I shall declare your greatness. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Again, we begin at Acts, the 14th chapter today, verses 1 through 7, entitled, Paul and Barnabas at Iconium. Now at Iconium they entered together into the Jewish synagogue and spoke in such a way that a great number of both Jews and Greeks believed. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brothers. So they remained for a long time, speaking boldly for the Lord, who bore witness to the word of his grace, granting signs and wonders to be done by their hands. But the people of the city were divided. Some sided with the Jews and some with the apostles. When an attempt was made both by both Gentiles and Jews with their rulers to mistreat them and to stone them, they learned of it and fled to Lystria, Derbia, cities of Lyst, Lycania, and to the surrounding country, and there they continued to preach the gospel. So far the word of the Lord. Paul's visit to Iconium follows the pattern set in Christian Antioch. The message of grace again encounters violent opposition. The word of grace from God is sufficient for us. But the Lord may accompany his message with miraculous signs to testify to its power. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your powerful word. word. May it bear abundant fruit, as you have promised, even in the midst of opposition. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Continuing now at verse 8, Paul and Barnabas at Lystra. Now at Lystra there was a man sitting who could not use his feet. He was crippled from birth and never had never walked. He listened to Paul speaking, and Paul, looking intently at him and seeing that he had faith to be made well, said in a loud voice, Stand upright on your feet. And he sprang up and began walking. And when the crowd saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in Lycanian, The gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. Barnabas they called Zeus, and Paul Hermes, because he was the chief speaker. And the priest of Zeus, whose temple was at the entrance to the city, brought oxen and garlands to the gate, and wanted to offer sacrifice with the crowd. But when the apostles, apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of it, they tore their garments and rushed out into the crowd, crying out, Men, why are you doing these things? We also are men of like nature with you, and we bring you good news, that you should turn from these vain things to a living God, who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. In past generations he allowed all the nations to walk in their own way. Yet he did not leave himself without witness, for he did good by giving you rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, satisfying your hearts with food and gladness. Even with these words, they scarcely restrain the people from offering sacrifice to them. So far the word. Lystra has no synagogue, so when God miraculously heals someone, Paul testifies to the people that God graciously blesses all of creation. People by nature tend to worship gods of their own making and in their own way. Yet God's bounty in creation, and especially his word, come to turn us away from idolatry, and toward him we pray. Praise to you, O Lord, the King of creation. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand, you satisfy the desires of every living thing. Continuing now, verses 19 through 13, Paul stoned at Lystra. The Jews came from Antioch and Iconium, and having persuaded the crowds, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing that he was dead. But when the disciples gathered about him, he rose up and entered the city, and on the next day he went on with Barnabas to Derbe. When they had preached the gospel to that city and had made many disciples, they returned to Lystra, to Iconium, and to Antioch, strengthening the souls of the disciples, 
encouraging them to continue in the faith and saying that through many tribulations we must enter the kingdom of God. And they had appointed elders for them in every church with prayer, fasting. They committed, they committed them to the Lord in whom they had believed. So far the word. The conclusion of Paul's work in Lystra illustrates both suffering for the gospel and the power of the gospel. God's people should expect opposition from a sinful world, yet the gospel is crowned with success. It grants us entrance into God's kingdom while strengthening and encouraging us all along the way. We pray. Lord, strengthen my soul so that in faith I may say, why should cross and trial grieve me? Christ is near with his spirit. Never will he leave me. In his name I pray. And now the last verses of chapter 14. 24 through 28, Paul and Barnabas returned to Antioch in Syria. Then they passed through Pisidia and came to Pamphylia, and when they had spoken the word to Perga, they went down to Attilia, and from there they sailed to Antioch, where they had been commanded by the grace of God for the work that they had fulfilled. And when they arrived and gathered the church together, they declared all that the God had done with them, and how he had opened a door of faith to the Gentiles. And there remained no little time for the disciples. Paul and Barnabas end their journey by reporting to those who sent them everything God has done. Neither our faith nor our missionary achievements are ultimately our own doing. It is God who opens the door of faith for us and for those whom to we witness. We pray, Heavenly Father, may your spirit move your church to spread your word, bring many more people into your kingdom, and strengthen all believers to endure the trials they face on their way to heaven. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. We continue now into chapter 15, the Jerusalem Council. But some men came down from Judea and were teaching the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. And after Paul and Barnabas had no small discussion and debate with them, Paul and Barnabas and some of the others were appointed to go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and to the elders about this question. So being sent on their way by the church, they passed through both Phoenicia and Samaria, describing in detail the conversion of the Gentiles, and brought great joy to all the brothers. When they came to Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church and the apostles and the elders, and they declared all that God had done with them. But some believers who belonged to the party of the Pharisees rose up and said, It is necessary to circumcise them in order for them to keep the law of Moses. The apostles and the elders were gathered together to consider this matter, and after there had been much debate, Peter stood up and said to them, Brothers, you know that in the early days God made a choice among you, that by my mouth the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, who knows the heart, bore witness to them, by giving them the Holy Spirit, just as he did to us. And he made no distinction between us and them, having cleansed their hearts by faith. Now therefore, why are you putting God to the test by placing a yoke on the neck of the disciples that neither our fathers nor we have been able to bear. But we believe that we will be saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus, just as they will. And all the assembly fell silent, and they listened to Barnabas and Paul as they related what signs and wonders God had done through them among the Gentiles. After they finished speaking, James replied, Brothers, listen to me. Simeon has related how God first worked, had first visited the Gentiles to take from them a people for his name. And with these words, and with this, the words of the prophets agree, just as it is written. After this I will return, and I will rebuild the tent of David that has fallen. I will rebuild its ruins, and I will restore it. And the remnant of mankind may seek the Lord, and all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord who makes these things, known from of old. For my judgment is that we should not trouble those of the Gentiles who turn to God, but should write to them to abstain from the things that are polluted by idols, and from sexual immorality, and from what has been strangled, and from blood. For from ancient generations Moses has had in every city those who proclaim him, for he is read every Sabbath in the synagogue. So far the word of the Lord. The Jerusalem Council resolved the critical issue of who God's chosen people are, and affirmed that Jews and Gentiles are saved by grace alone. Obedience to the law is a burden or a yoke no one can bear, neither Jew nor Gentile. 
However, our salvation through faith also, alone also empowers us to live with care and respect for others. We pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, I praise you for saving us through the grace of our Lord Jesus. Empower and guide your people to live in that grace, to live out that grace for the sake of others within and outside of the church. In your name we pray. Amen. Continuing now at verse 22, the council's letters letter to Gentile believers. Then it seemed good to the apostles and the elders with the whole church to choose men from among them and send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. They sent Judas, called Barsabbas, and Silas, leading men among the brothers, with the following letters. The brothers, both the apostles and the elders, to the brothers who are of the Gentiles in Antioch and Syria, and Sicilia, greeting. Since we have heard that some persons have gone out from us and troubled you with words, unsettling your minds, although we gave them no instructions. It has seemed good to us, having come to one accord, to choose men and to send them to you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men who have risked their lives for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have therefore sent Judas and Silas, who themselves will tell you the same things by word of mouth. For it has seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay on you no greater burden than these requirements, that you abstain from what has been sacrificed to idols and from blood and from what has been strangled and from sexual immorality. If you keep yourselves from these, you will do well. Farewell. So when they were sent off, they went down to Antioch, and having gathered the congregation together, they delivered the letter. And when they had read it, they rejoiced because of its encouragement. And Judas and Silas, who were themselves prophets, encouraged and strengthened the brothers with many words. And after they had spent some time, they were sent off in peace by the brothers to those who had sent them. But Paul and Barnabas remained in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord, with many others also. So far the word of the Lord. The decision reached in Jerusalem is delivered by delegation and by letters to the believers in Syrian Antioch, affirming the teaching of the council. Today, seek peace based on God's word and mutual care of fellow believers. The Lord who cares deeply for you will bless and provide for you in Christ, our peace. We pray. Heavenly Father, may your spirit work through the holy scriptures and human messengers to affirm the good news of our salvation and to teach us your will. Help all of your people to listen and to respond in faith and love. In your name we pray. Amen. And the last of today from chapter 15, verses 36 through 41, Paul and Barnabas separate. And after some days, Paul said to Barnabas, Let us return and visit the brothers in every city where we proclaim the word of the Lord, and see how they are. Now Barnabas wanted to take with them John, called Mark. But Paul thought best not to take with them one who had withdrawn from them in Pamphylia and had not gone with them to the work. And there arose a sharp disagreement, so that they separated from each other. Barnabas took Mark with him and sailed away to Cyprus, but Paul chose Silas and departed, having been commended by the brothers to the grace of the Lord. And he went to Syria and Sicily, strengthening the churches. So far the word. After disagreement over John Mark, two missionary teams are sent out from Antioch. Believers are also sent, even Paul and Barnabas, and will at times have sharp disagreements. Yet God promises to work all things for good, even our faults and even our failings, as he forgives our sins in Christ. We pray, Heavenly Father, when dissension arises among your people, forgive our sins and continue to work among us, even through our conflict. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We pray for our calendar for this 27th day of the month. We pray for all members of the military who were disabled during their duty, that our Heavenly Father would mercifully guide them, give them aid, and strengthen all those with physical disabilities, enabling them to find fulfillment in their lives and encouragement for all their endeavors. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. O merciful Father, you have wounded your own Son to bring us the eternal healing of your love. Bless the sick and those who suffer, those wounded in body or mind, and those dying and all those we now name to you in our hearts.
as well as Art and Rick, Melissa and Clifford, Helen and Mary Ann, Karen and Jane, George and Hart, Bonnie, Marilyn, and Chris. In your own time, grant to them healing according to your will and sustain them until the day of the resurrection of the body. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things, O Lord, and whatever else you know that we need, we pray you to grant us for the sake of the mercies and by the merits of our Savior, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.